Having a home gym is incredible. The issue though, is if you want a lot of different things that you'd find in a commercial gym, or you find issues, you kind of have to either buy something expensive or you have to hack something together. So today, I'm gonna show you 10 of my favorite home gym hacks that anybody can add easily and cheaply to their gym. Let's do it. Okay, before we get into any of the goodies of the home gym hacks, I wanna make sure I let you know that we have many of these upcoming. This is a series that we're doing, so if you'd like to see more of these, make sure you subscribe and you'll see them, or if you'd like to add some, let me know in the comments, and we wanna let more of the home gym community know about all these awesome hacks. Okay, let's start. This first one involves tennis balls. Yes, tennis balls. This is what we're gonna do. First off, we have to enjoy this together because this is one of the best part of playing tennis or using tennis balls. Hold on. Oh, incredible. But today, I'm gonna show you my juggling skills. Okay, today we are gonna use this on a landmine. Let's do it. Practically every home gym uses a barbell. The issue is if you want a landmine, you're gonna have to buy one. However, I think that's a little unnecessary. One, you don't wanna jam it into the wall like this. Nope, nope, nope. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna protect both our barbell and the wall without having to spend a lot of money. All you need is a 99 cent tennis ball. In fact, you can get a three pack at Walmart for like two bucks. Take your tennis ball and cut it in quarters. Then what we're gonna do is take our barbell. Shoop, awkward angle here, but this is the best way to do it. Place this on, slap her in. Now let's work. One of the most popular rack types that's available today is this over here. This is a three by three inch, 11 gauge steel, one inch hole rack. The issue is there's a lot of people out there that want to use cheaper attachments like what's available for a Monster Light that uses 5 8 inch holes. The problem then is you can't attach a 5 inch hole attachment within here without causing some sort of issue because it's just not going to be aligned. That's where these come in. These are one inch spacers. These are easy to use, easy to find, cheap, and they allow you to attach a 5 8 inch attachment with bolts within a one inch rack. This is how it works. Place it in here, shoop. Place your bolt, tighten it. You now have space on either side. It's gonna lock in. It's not gonna fall through because it's exactly three inches and you're gonna be able to use any 5 8 inch attachment. These up here, these pull up handles from Prime Fitness, I get asked about them all the time. How do you use those? Because they use a 5 8 inch hole. Well, we use spacers. Same thing I've used for other attachments. They work, they're cheap, get them. Bands are quite possibly one of the most versatile pieces of equipment for the price that are available in home gyms. They're great to add to barbells for accommodating resistance, but there's a lot of people that just use them for just all day training because you can load up and it doesn't take up a lot of space and they're really cheap. However, I think there is a movement that a lot of people don't use them for. When I played ice hockey growing up, we did wrist rolls all the time. One way I think you can do wrist rolls is just using the stuff you've already got. That's using a band, a barbell, and a band peg. I'll show you. So to do this, attach the band to the band peg. I like to tie it off so that it's there. I like to use a heavier band because this can feel a little bit easy. You then wrap the band around so it's secure on the other side by the band, and then you can just go to town. And it gets really hard really quick go as far as you want. Obviously be careful because this band could snap. Make sure there's not any, I mean, most bands are going to take a ton of tension before they snap. Just make sure there's no lacerations or anything. And then you can walk it back down the other side till you get to the point you want to, and then come back up. And I'm telling you, this gets rough near the end. The heavy, the harder you want it to be, just add a heavier band. When I moved into this house, I knew there was one thing I wanted to do immediately that I didn't do at my old garage gym. I wanted to remove the garage door. If you notice, there's no garage door opener. This is where it would normally connect, up top, down the center, and then up above. Every garage door opener in the world is like that. I'm sure the one in your garage gym is the same. 
However, I still wanted the ability to automatically open the garage door in case I just wanted to work out outside. It's just easier to use. So I removed it and then I added a new garage door opener I found. These are amazing and I think these should be a staple in nearly every garage gym. This is a jack shaft garage door opener. These are somewhat recent, however, they're popular enough that you can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot and they're not incredibly expensive. Yeah, they're probably about 300 bucks or so, so quite a bit more, maybe double the price of a cheap overhead garage door opener, but they have a couple advantages. One, the biggest one for garage gym owners is you can now lift overhead while the garage door is closed. Typically, the way it would work is if your garage door is down, you still couldn't lift overhead because you have an opener right above you. You'd have the track going above you. So you can't lift overhead. Well, now you have all this free space when the garage is closed, but you still have the ability to automatically open it because what it's doing is it's just turning the jack shaft and pulling it. It's also extremely quiet. It's modern, so you can use you know, your phone, Wi-Fi, things like that. But I think it's a, a cheap enough addition that adds a ton of space and value to a garage gym uh, that's honestly really easy to do. One of my favorite attachments for squat racks is something that I think a lot of people overlook because it's really cheap, and that is these leg rollers. I'm gonna show you how a movement that I do with these that I think could replace the entire bench that is normally used for it. It's a lot cheaper and a lot more versatile. Let's do it. Okay. If you go into any commercial gym, you're gonna find a preacher curl bench. People want preacher curl benches for the garages. The issue is it only does one thing, preacher curls. So you can use this in the same way you use a preacher curl bench. We've got one over here. You really only need to do one if you're doing single arm, but if you want to do a double arm because you're just extra special gooder, you can do. I've always been good at finding holes. Now you have the ability to do standing preacher curls. You can do bending if you'd like, just like you would on a preacher curl bench. You can also, because you're using a squat rack, not just use dumbbells, but you can attach a barbell to your squat rack for off lifting and use it just like you use a preacher curl bench, like this. I say this all the time, but most home gym owners need to take things off the floor and put them on the wall. This is like a specialized item that you can use to store bands and chains and all sorts of attachments, but you gotta put it in a wall. It's expensive, another expense, and honestly, outside of looks, it's not that much more useful than a DIY version. You can get one of these. This is a cheap S hook I found on Amazon. I bought a pack of like 30 for a couple bucks. These actually work much better than I think most people assume. Sure, there's companies making these that are like welded and thick and last a long time, but I think for most people, they're just holding something static and not a ton of weight. The way that it works is you just place it in the hole on an upright. You can do it on a 5 8 inch hole, a one inch hole, or smaller or bigger, it doesn't matter. It's universal. You then take a chain, a band, whatever you want to hold, place it on there, and it's good to go. I wouldn't suggest putting two chains on there. I mean, this is like a 35 pound chain actually, so pretty good. People spend a lot of money to protect their barbell. This is a sandwich J cup that has UHMW plastic all throughout, and it's expensive. The reason is because it's supposed to protect nice bars, it looks good, that sort of thing. But I think that most people that have a rack have a J cup like this, and buying something like that, I think is unnecessary, it's nice, I like them, but I think you can get by with this. The only issue with these type of J cups is that they can cause metal to metal contact and then end up wearing the neural on your bar and end up wearing the powder coat on your rack. If you can see right here, this Jacob hasn't been used a whole lot, but it's starting to wear from the barbell because you bring it forward and you like grind it in there. Easy fix. So we're gonna use flex tape as seen on TV. Simple as this, slicer and dicer. We're then gonna take the backing off here. This stuff is quite thick. You can get UHMW tape, but I think flex tape is more accessible for most people and it's super strong, and I really like their commercials. It doesn't even look like there's anything in there. It's gonna protect your bar and your J-cup from wear. If you're like me, you use a phone every time you work out. You use it for your sets, you use it to adjust the music, everything like that. You're putting it on the ground, you're putting it on a bench, you're putting it somewhere, you don't know where it is, it's hard to use. I've got a fix for you. I always forget about telling people this because I've had it for so long, it's just become like synonymous with my training, that is, 
a magnet on your phone. This, you're around racks and steel all the time, all day. Having a magnet on your phone just allows you to place it wherever you'd like. You don't need a special attachment that like holds it up. A simple magnet, no, it won't wipe your RAM. I hope it doesn't, it hasn't mine yet. Place it on the rack. You're able to use it anytime, when you want. Boo! Face ID. Beautiful, easy as that. Get one of these. This is so simple, so easy, so helpful. A popular piece of equipment in a home gym are loadable dumbbells. You can load them heavy, they work really well for a lot of movements, and they're cheap. They are annoying though, because when you place them on your knees, if you've got a bunch of weight, they dig into your thighs. It's like uncomfortable, unwieldy, it just doesn't work. So, we're gonna use our handy dandy tennis balls again. Just like we did with the landmine, we're gonna cut four slits into it because it's the same Olympic sleeve. After you load the plates, you can simply put the tennis ball on, on each side, flip it over. Ah, my knees feel great. Go back and train. For just a couple bucks, you can have a simple, helpful, user-friendly tennis ball that protects your thighs. To the theme of getting things off your floor and putting them on the wall, everyone should be doing that. You need something to put it on though, and this is what I recommend. This is a metal pegboard. There's many companies making these. There's wall control, which is kind of a popular one because it's cheaper. My favorite is OmniWall because they're using a different attachment system, a thicker gauge steel board, and they have a lot more attachments. I think this is a, a easier to assemble. It just works better than my experience with wall control. However, both are fine. They're nice though because you can put all sorts of stuff. Anything from weight plates to handles, to just different random attachments that never get used but look pretty. Or over here, I've just got like this cleaning wall. So I've got my leaf blower, everyone needs five of those. I've got my vacuum and then my charging station, other random attachments. They go on the wall easy. You can line them up on studs. I highly recommend getting your crap off the floor, put it on a pegboard. Do it. Okay, there's 10 of the greatest home gym hacks of all time from your buddy Coop. Thanks for watching. Do you have any home gym hacks that we should do in the future? Let me know in the comments. Let me know on any of these that like stuck out to you and you're like, man, thanks for giving that. We'll see you next time. <gasps> Peace.